Welcome to Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. When you say fun, you say you care enough to only want the green or There's no other one. Anheuser Bush, St. Louis. Well, good evening, uh, Mystery Theater fans. This is uh, Gene Shepard, and we're sitting here having a very friendly roundtable discussion with many of our listeners who gather nightly here at uh, the 710 spot on the dial. And if you'd like to join our little evening gatherings, I'm on every night at, uh, let's see, it's 9.15 now. 9.15. You write that down. And make sure that uh, you bring all the things you need to be prepared for a fantastic evening. I'm on every night from 9.15 until 10. Join our little group some night. We sit around and discuss the world and enjoy life and and uh, walk around in the weeds and uh, just be people. 9.15 on WOR. I really don't know that there's much I can say. You heard, and what you heard has surely given rise to thoughts you may not have entertained before. As I said at the outset, there are those who believe that death is not death, but birth. That indeed, what we call life is in itself a death we go through to find the reality of life. I wish I knew for sure... Our cast included Jennifer Harmon, Jack Grimes, Nancy Coleman, and Joe Silver. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... Tonight's WOR Mystery Theater was also brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you got a lot more for a little less, and by Suburban Savings, with offices throughout North Jersey. The preceding program was furnished by the Columbia Broadcasting System. What's for dinner? Your ShopRite supermarket suggests choice beef first cut chuck steaks, just 59 cents a pound this week. Save two on smoked hams. Shank portion, 69 cents a pound. Butt portion, 79 cents a pound. For a quick meal, try Swanson's Frozen Hungry Man Dinners, just 99 cents each. For dessert, ShopRite's produce department is featuring fresh honeydew melons, 79 cents each. They're great, topped with ice cream. There's a lot more for a little less at your ShopRite. Stop in soon at Shop right. She loves the family. She wants the best. She does all that she can do. She lets Shop right do the rest. Hey, Ma, what's for dinner? Shop right has the answer. And now, with another story of mystery and intrigue, here is Commander Neville Putney to keep you in anxiety. What's this story about, Commander? Well, it concerns a middle-aged business executive named Fremont Witherton, who, after spending his entire career with the same firm, returned home one evening with his dreams suddenly shattered. Is that you, Fremont? It's me, Erica. Fremont, you look so peaked. Erica, I've been fired. That new plant manager, he's been trying to cut me out, and today he succeeded. Well, you don't need to give me that hangdog look. Just go out and get another job. I'm through, Erica. I'm 58 years old. Nobody will hire me for half the salary I've been making. My only hope is to kill the plant manager. Fremont, I hate rough stuff, but if you've decided, your Ross goes upstairs in the trunk. You load it, and I'll warm up the getaway car. 
Hey, young man. How about that for a story? Well, that was a dilly, Commander, but you just can't leave us this way. How did it all come out? Time's up for now, but tune in, Bob and Ray, on WOR 315 to 7, and maybe you'll find out. There is no mystery about the morning when you come rambling with gambling. Good evening, evening mystery fans. Uh, this is John Gambling, and every morning, Monday through Saturday, here at WOR from 5 a.m. till 10, we get the crew together to try to uh, put the morning together for you, to tell you what the weather's going to be like, whether there's heavy traffic coming into the city, whether the subways and the commuter trains are running. Bob Harris is in WOR's Weather Center every morning with all that very complicated equipment that he has to help prognosticate the day's weather. Uh, we cover sports completely with Don Crickey. In the news department, Peter Roberts, Henry Gladstone, and Harry Hennessy. And up in the helicopter, George Meade or Fred Feldman, keeping an eye on the traffic scene. So all together, we do try to take any mystery out of the morning. And just to brighten up the beginning of your day a little bit, I think we have some kind of nice, listenable, and tuneful music. So tune in tomorrow morning or any morning for Rambling with Gambling. Now, back to the mystery. This is WOR New York, an RKO General Station. British Research Institute says Reds hold lead over the United States in long-range missile potential. Senator Stennis says our Navy is better than theirs. Jaworski subpoenas former President Nixon in the Watergate cover-up. It's 72 degrees in mid-Manhattan. The man says partly cloudy tonight, partly sunny and mild tomorrow, chance of showers tomorrow night. This is John Scott with the 8 o'clock edition of the news featuring the Financial Review. A British research institute reports the Soviet Union is leading the world in a number of long-range missiles it possesses. And China is slowly but steadily building up its nuclear capability. In its annual survey, the International Institute for Strategic Studies states the Russians have nearly 600 more long-range nuclear missiles in the United States. The Institute's experts estimate that under present building plans, the American nuclear arsenal won't catch up with the Soviets for another five years. The chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee has denounced speculation that the U.S. Navy is inferior to that of the Soviet Union. Democrat John Stennis of Mississippi called such talk false, alarmist, potentially dangerous. In a Senate speech, Stennis declared that on a Navy-to-Navy -Navy basis, the Soviet Navy does not match the culpability the capability of the U.S. Navy. He also said the Soviet Navy has no significant sea-based air power and no major amphibious assault forces. Special Watergate Prosecutor Leon Jaworski has subpoenaed former President Nixon to appear as a witness in the Watergate cover-up trial. Lawyers for the former president today ask that subpoenas in two civil cases stemming from the Watergate break-in be killed. And for the first time since he resigned from office, Mr. Nixon claimed executive privilege in behalf of his presidential tape recordings. Informants say Jaworski issued a subpoena to the president reluctantly. He considered it the only known way to get 33 presidential tape recordings introduced into evidence at the trial, scheduled to begin October 1st. Among those facing trial are former Attorney General John Mitchell and former top White House aides H.R. Haldeman and John Ehrlichman. The Foreign Minister of the Republic of Ireland, Dr. Garrett Fitzgerald, said tonight, There appears to be increasing evidence of more understanding among the Protestant working class in Northern Ireland of the problems and needs of the Catholic working class, and this could be a hopeful sign toward halting the bitterness and the violence in the North. Fitzgerald also appealed to Americans of Irish descent not to contribute to the outlawed IRA and other militant groups whom the Irish official blamed for prolonging the strife in Northern Ireland. Questioned about possible unification of the North and the South, the Foreign Minister had this comment. We believe there can be no reunification and should be no reunification of Ireland without the consent of a majority in Northern Ireland. That it is neither possible nor would it be right to attempt to coerce Northern Ireland into a union with the Republic. Consequently, logically deriving from that, we believe uh, that we have to seek peace and justice within Northern Ireland through the establishment of a power-sharing government in which both communities will have their part, thus ending forever the exploitation of the Catholic minority by the Protestant majority, which was a feature of the first half-century of the existence of Northern Ireland. And we believe that any solution must also involve a relationship between North and South, which will reflect the reality of the very close um, practical links there are between the two parts. 
The Senate has refused to order a final vote on a bill giving the consumer an official voice in the federal government, but sponsors in a turnabout said later a fifth attempt may be made to shut off a two-month filibuster that's blocked final consideration of the bill, creating an independent consumer commi protection commission. The attempt could come next week. Senate and House conferees on campaign finance legislation have bogged down over the question of using public funds for congressional elections. Because of the deadlock, the conferees broke off negotiations for at least 10 days. The delay could prevent final action by Congress on campaign financing legislation until after the November elections. The new chairman of President Ford's Council of Economic Advisors made an unpopular suggestion at a government-sponsored mini-summit in Washington on inflation. Alan Greenspan was asked by trade unionists in the audience if the Ford administration wasn't making the poor suffer a bit more to make life easier for manufacturers and the upper-income people. Greenspan replied, the people hurt most by inflation are the Wall Street brokers. He added, I mean their incomes have gone down the most. Many of the 180 delegates of the meeting jumped to their feet, giving out with cat calls, boos, jeers, and hisses. The WOR News Time, five minutes past eight, coming up. The Financial Review and more late news. This is Mary Helen McPhillips. I'd like to invite you to join me tomorrow morning at 10.15. My guest will be Werner Klemperer. Remember Colonel Klink of Hogan's Heroes fame? Well, Werner Klemperer is a charming man. I think you'll enjoy him tomorrow morning at 10.15. The white police officer who shot and killed a 14-year-old black youth last Sunday has been stripped of his guns. Police Commissioner Michael Codd says the action was taken following a lengthy meeting in City Hall between Mayor Beam, top city officials, and a group of residents of Brownsville where Claude Reese died. A mistrial has been declared in the federal court trial of New Jersey State Treasurer Joseph McCrane. The former treasurer is charged with violations of the campaign laws for allegedly helping businesses make donations look like tax-deductible expenses. The mistrial interrupted the proceedings in their second week. It was declared after a juror revealed that he and five other panelists had seen a newspaper article about the case. During the last few weeks he was in office, former President Nixon nominated Governor Thomas Meskill of Connecticut to serve on the federal bench. But that nomination has been under fire for weeks and Meskill faces an uncertain future. WOR's Dan Riley reports. Connecticut Governor Thomas Meskell says he's encouraged that he will be confirmed as a second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals judge. The governor said in his words, I have great faith in Senate Judiciary Chairman James Eastland, who Meskell said is most encouraging. The lame duck chief executive remained uncommitted on whether he'll finish out his full term as governor. A lot has to do with the situation in the state at the time. Um, my personal situation, I have to move my family. Um, a lot will have to do with the the needs of the court at the time as to whether or not there's any particular emergency that requires my sitting immediately. I think there, there are many factors that will all have to be weighed. I think the first thing that has to happen is to have a resolution of the confirmation itself. Democratic Senator John Tunney of California, a member of the Judiciary Committee, today joined the American Bar Association in denouncing Meskell's nomination. In Hartford, Dan Riley reporting, WOR News. Two reputed gamblers were found shot to death in gangland style today in widely separated sections of New York City. Police are trying to determine if they were victims of an intermittent mob war, which has been underway for some months. One of the two, Alfred Gallo, was found dead in the rear seat of a car parked in the Sheep's Head Bay section of Brooklyn. He'd been shot in the back of the head. Police said Gallo was not related to the gang currently headed by Albert Kid Blast Gallo, the last survivor of the underworld Gallo family. The remnants of the Gallo group have been warring with the underworld family of Joseph Colombo. The second shooting victim was 38-year-old Frank Carter of the Bronx. He, too, was shot in the head. His body was discovered slumped behind the wheel of his Cadillac on the grounds of an amusement park in Flushing, Queens. Police say both men had records including offenses other than gambling. Draft Dodger Dan Kraftick has surrendered to New York under President Ford's clemency program. The 25-year-old Kraftick said he did it as a birthday present to my kids. He's been working as a part-time driver for a private car service. Kraftick said, maybe without this hammer hanging over my head, I'll be able to get a better job and give them a better life. He reported to authorities today, which was his three-year-old son's birthday. Well, the weather and the top of the news after this. This evening, tune in for a new feature show on radio, In Conversation. It's a lively half hour of intelligent and entertaining discussion between bright, inquisitive personalities and very well-informed guests. 
We'll be offering conversation on politics, theater, the media, sports, music, books, the press, filmmaking, and humor. Our hosts change almost every night, and this week you'll be hearing Nat Hentoff, author, journalist, and social critic, actress Celeste Holm, Arthur Knight, film critic, and tonight, Brendan Gill, author and drama critic for The New Yorker magazine. That's In Conversation, tonight and every weeknight. That's two, nine at ten, and here at seven ten. The Weather Watch update, partly cloudy and hazy tonight, with the low in the low 60s. Partly sunny and mild tomorrow, the high in the low 80s. Chance of showers tomorrow night. The low around 60. On Saturday, partly sunny, the high in the mid-70s. Right now in clear mid-Manhattan, 72 degrees, the humidity 69%, the wind south at 8 miles an hour, and the barometer steady at 30.19 inches. And the top stories, the British Research Institute reports the Soviet Union has a long lead over the United States.